Hey guys, it's Gameface here, and welcome back to episode 9 of my Leech United career mode. In today's episode, we've got plenty of matches to get through, also the January transfer window as well to get going through. The first game is against Nottingham Forest in the league for us to play, so looking forward to that match. Should be quite a good game for us, currently in 6th position in the league. Then we've got Aston Villa in the Cup, Emirates FA Cup for us to play here, and then potentially Derby County, depends how many transfers we're going to bring in in today's episode. Looking forward to things, hopefully going to try and bring in a couple of names. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, who I'm going to bring in right now, so we'll have to wait and see as the episode goes on. Also leave your suggestions as well if we don't necessarily sign players in this episode. Before we go any further, I'd appreciate you dropping a like on today's video and subscribing if you haven't already as well, as we try and push towards 25 thousand subscribers i'd really appreciate you going ahead and doing that uh, first of all let's take a look at the fact that diaz has left the club he's left and uh, that's a deal that was already previously agreed does that mean he now leaves us and obviously we have one less player in the squad but i'm pretty happy with the squad at the moment uh, we are gonna have to make some changes though for this game against nottingham forest uh, a change side uh, a few players getting rested and a few players coming into the team that haven't played recently i was tempted to go for a 4-3-3 somebody recommended it in the last episode or one of the recent episodes there's also the 4 4 1 formation, which has been working, so we are going to stick with that because it's been working. Pick up Farrell's going to start in goal. We've got Ailing, Dawson, Cooper, and Douglas at the back. Phillips, Luckman, Click, Saez, and Alioski midfield, and Bamford starting up front. So a slight change there for us in a few different positions. The bench looks like this Idaguchi coming onto the bench, which he's not done recently, but um, yeah, he's going to get a chance possibly to come off the bench at some point and play for us. But let's go on with this game. Let's try and beat uh, Nottingham Forest. Looking to try and get three points here as we try and push towards third place. Okay, and here we go for this game against Forest. Let's see how we get on. Try and get ourselves a victory in this match. Forest, a good team. Um, though I don't really know where they are in the league, but it certainly feels like they've got a good team, a few good players in there. Liam Bridcut, of course, a former Leeds player, is also in their side for this game. Let's wait and see what we get on, though. I'm just hoping that we can get ourselves plenty of goals. It's something that has uh, been a bit of a struggle for us at times recently. We've had to grind out wins rather than win emphatically. Let's see whether we can try and do that with this changed team. Uh, we've got uh, Luckman play over to Click here. Chance for him to get a cross into the middle. Alioski was there, but Bamford nowhere to be seen. Bamford into Saez. That's good from Saez. He shoots, and actually a good shot that had to be saved by the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, will be kept in by a defender. Oh, what an overhead kick that was. Don't think it was going on target, but a great chance for Forrest there. That sort of came out of nowhere, really. Strange sort of position to do that from. Chance for them once again, though, if we can stop it here with Saez and get a counter-attack going, that would be good. Luckman into Bamford. Bamford trying to play to Alioski. Just not got enough on it. Saez wins it back and into Alioski. Now into Bamford. Bamford looking across to Luckman. Luckman through to Click. Click trying to get there and he should have got there. And he could have definitely stuck a foot out and got there. Trying to take it around the goalkeeper. Could have maybe won a penalty if he'd managed to do that. Unfortunately, didn't. A few things that I've seen so far I'm not happy with in particular. And it's the distances between the players. Particularly in midfield, the distances are too much. We keep on losing the ball. Um, when you're a little bit more than sort of 10 yards away from players, you do put passes at risk. Look where Click is now. I don't want him there. I want him getting to space. I want him a little bit closer than he is. So there's a few problems. Calvin Phillips, I mean, again, we've seen the same sort of problem. Calvin Phillips, again, coming out of position too much. It's frustrating, really, because he's sort of the most important player on the pitch. When he doesn't do his job properly, I've said it before, we're a bit of a mess. And it keeps on happening time and time again, where he just ends up playing as a centre attack in mid. Not his role at all. Look where he is. This is Calvin Phillips on the edge of the box. On the edge of the box, Calvin Phillips. The score 1-0, Nottingham Forest. And obviously Phillips isn't the person that could have done anything there. But my point is, this shows about the positioning of the players. It's completely wrong. Uh, and it's something I've tried to correct time and time again. It's difficult though. When you when you have him as a holder midfielder, he should be where Saez is. Every single time that gets mixed up. And before you know it, uh, players are in the wrong positions. And they can't make the right impact where they're supposed to be. And uh, so yeah, the score here, Nottingham Forest. 1-0 just before half time. Didn't realise we were so close to half time actually. Uh, 40th minute at the moment and losing the game 1-0. Disappointing. Feels a bit harsh on us really. We've had the better of the play. They've not had too many chances. Uh, we've not had that many shots. But we've had the ball a lot of around this sort of area and not been able to break down the defence properly. Okay, half time losing the game 1-0. Uh, disappointed obviously, uh, but let's crack them in the second half and uh, try and find a way back into it. It's going to be difficult though to do that. Uh, Nottingham Forest defending very resiliently. Um, they've, like I said, not really gone forward that much, so they haven't uh, done anything but defend really in that first half. So, yeah, gutted by the scoreline, but got to find a way to do something. Bamford's hardly sort of filling me with much hope up front, to be honest. Bamford, a chance here, hits the side netting, has to hit the target. No, a chance again. It's another sort of undeserved uh, goal for Nottingham Forest. It's 2 0 now. Uh, they've had very few shots. 
They keep taking them though, and that's obviously very tough for us to take. Two shots on target for Nottingham Forest, two goals at the moment. Um, we've not had that many shots, so, you know, the stats, I think they probably have more shots than us. Um, but we can't complain too much based on the stats. It looks like they've deserved to be in front. But they've had three shots, two goals. I think we've had maybe two shots ourselves, but on the ball, we're so much better than them, in, and we're so much higher at the pitch as well. This is the crazy thing. <sighs> Another chance, Nottingham Forest. It's starting to look like the uh, scoreline's deserved now, because we've just lost a complete grip of the game. Okay, first two changes, Roberts and Iguchi to come on. We'll take off Cameron Phillips and Bamford. There's 30 minutes to go. There's no doubt we can still get two goals in 30 minutes. Um, will it happen, though? We'll have to wait and see. Final change, Luckman coming off, Harrison coming on. Again, gutted to have to do that, because I was going to give Luckman a bit of a more of a chance, really. I wanted to give him the full 90 minutes, but... Again, his impact isn't being that great. So Harrison comes on. Uh, Iniguchi so far is playing the role that I want somebody to play. He's sitting here there and just sort of dictate and play, which is fantastic to see. Finally, someone's doing it. Uh, chance for Saeed to get a ball into the box. Alioski to put this one in. Saez is there. It's always tough for us there to uh, connect to that one. I want to play Alioski. That's good. Alioski now for the cross back in. Saez was there. We're putting in some fantastic passes. Just not having any good shots and not actually looking like we're going to score. Alioski, good chance from here. Got to look for a cross into the middle. Big chance to Saez. Again, no one can get there. Kind of feels like we're passing the ball around uh, really well right now, but we just can't get a goal. And it feels like we could be here for hours and hours and we still wouldn't get a goal. Oh my god, it's 3 0. Wow. Literally, in the last 30 minutes, Nottingham Forest haven't had a shot. Uh, that's come out of nowhere. It's a cheap free kick to give away and to finish off the game, they've got a third goal as well. It's unbelievable, it really is. I don't think the stats will agree with what I'm saying because we actually haven't had that many shots ourselves. But, like I say, the possession in the areas of the pitch that we've had it in, we should be doing a lot more with it. We haven't done enough with it. It's been a strange game because, on one hand, we've been actually pretty good, passed the ball around really nicely. And then, on the other hand, we've been absolutely useless, absolutely terrible, made so many mistakes. It's been a weird game. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. 3-0 is a scoreline that doesn't really reflect the game at all. But like I say, stats-wise, shot-wise, it pretty much does. Um, we just didn't have any shots. We had all the possession in much better areas than they did half the time, but we just didn't have any shots. Okay, so let's move into the transfer window now. There's a few players I want to try and sign. First of all, James Milner. I want to try and bring him in back to Leeds, hopefully try and get on a pre-contract agreement. He's going to be tough. He's an expensive player, um, but you know he's got six months left in his deal. I want to try and have him for next season. Assuming we're in the Premier League. I don't even know whether we are going to be in the Premier League um, at this rate. I think we're going to have to give him crucial first-team player. That's probably... The right thing, yes, he'll accept that. He wants a one-year deal. Okay, we'll, we'll agree on a two-year deal then. And then 100 grand a week wage, or is he happy with 95? What do you reckon? I'm going to go 95. I reckon he's probably just going to be happy to settle with that. Yeah, no surprise there. I would be. So we've signed James Muller. As easy as that, we've signed him ready for next season. Uh, That's pretty easy, but at the same time, obviously, you know, he's 33 years old. He's hardly peak Milner, but... Um, yeah, he's still got performances in him, I think, and he's quite an expensive player for us to bring in, 95 grand a week, but uh, let's just hope we're in the Premier League, so hopefully that'll be fine. Okay, into so this cup game now against Aston Villa. This is the team I'm going to go with. I think we'll actually start Blackman in goal for this game. But right here, right back, Janssen, um, Strujic, Strujic? No, no idea how you pronounce his name. Pierce at left back. Uh, Idiguchi there as a whole midfielder. Dallas, Baker, Brown, Aarons and Roberts all starting. That's the bench as well. Loads of changes. Let's crack on. Okay, then we go for this game at Villa Park. Let's see how we get on. Try and get ourselves a victory. I don't even know that I want a victory really in this game. It's the FA Cup. I'm not really bothered. I just want to get in the Premier League. Um, so that's why I've changed the team around so much. But we'll wait and see what sort of performance we get. Obviously, we're going to try and win. Um, but what I'm saying is if we don't, it won't be the biggest disaster in the world. This is mainly just an opportunity to see whether there's any players that I'm not playing that I should be playing. But are probably not one of them by the looks of it. What a pass that is to Aaron's. Big chance here. Aaron's shooting on his right foot. It's saved by the goalkeeper. Big chance for Dallas as well, but couldn't keep the ball on the pitch. Chance. And it's on a plate for Glenn Wheeling. Good save by Blackman. And a big opportunity there for Aston Villa. They're really sort of setting the tempo for this game. Keep hold of possession really well. We're struggling to cope with it right now. Uh, but another save. Another save. And this will be a goal. It was going, they've had three or four chances in a row and Aston Villa take the lead here 20 minutes into this match. Blackman had kept it at 0-0, but not this time, and it's scored by Adoma. No, no, it's 2-0. <laughs> what a mess at the back. 
And it's Glenn Whelan. Whenever Glenn Whelan scores against you, you know that's not good. That is never good when it's Glenn Whelan. Not only does he look about 60 on this, but he's probably never scored in his life. This falls to in the box because Janssen, I think, just puts on a plate for him, but it's not Janssen's fault. There's so many issues there, so many mistakes. We have so many more players in the box as well, and arguably that shot could have been saved. It's 2-0 Villa, and I can't even complain about the goal, really, or any of the goals. They've been the better team. Should have been 3-0 there, very good chance for Aston Villa, good cross into the box, didn't track the attacker properly. The header should have gone in really, um, but so looking for us it was a pretty poor one from them. Half time, losing the game 2-0, um, there's really no debate, Aston Villa, the superior team, got the better team out and playing the better football. Deservedly in front, we've not done anything or enough, um, not even had sort of possession in good areas or anything in this game, uh, so never mind any shots. But yeah, it's been a poor first half from us, kind of to be expected with so many changes in this team. Uh, but we've still got to be able to string a few passes together a little bit better than we have done. And that's something we've really failed at doing. First change, uh, Brown's going to come off fairly early on in the second half. Uh, Forshaw sure will come on to replace him. Um, not to do with Brown's performance or anything like that. It's just a case of protecting a few players that are more likely to be used in our first team. Well played. Stuart Dallas going to hit it. And he should score. Wow. Very good chance actually for Dallas. He's looked quite good in the second half. Um, I was expecting him to hit the target at least. But unfortunately just wide. Roberts, look for the ball through here, big chance of Baker, across, oh my god, <laughs> if there was one clip that would sum up today's episode so far, it would definitely be that, fantastic play, no shot, and uh, that's pretty much been the last couple of games here, really, really good play, ball through to Baker, he played it across to Dallas, he just had to score, to not even hit the target, it's just embarrassing. Final two changes, Luckman and Harrison to come on, we'll take off Aarons and we'll also take off Baker as well. Dallas to go play as a midfielder uh, for the rest of this game. Just over 10 minutes to go. We've been the, probably the best team in the second half, I'd say. Um, yeah, we've not managed to get a goal still. It's frustrating, obviously we've had opportunities, Dallas being the, the main chance, but can't say we've had any more proper chances other than that one. Oh my god. Wow, that is uh, horrific. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, uh, we'll have a look at that one back, because I think Janssen just sort of heads midair there, which is almost impressive. And uh, with seven minutes to go, Aston Villa like it 3-0, just as we were looking like a half-decent team. Uh, El Amadi comes down the right-hand side, Tom Pierce is nowhere near to be seen, and look at that, Janssen just... I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing there. Uh, you can only laugh about it, because it's just that bad. Uh, but there you go, Blackman not able to save it. It's difficult, but obviously Janssen should mark him better. Defensively a mess once again. Tom Pierce, I don't think, knows where he is on the pitch. He's playing a whole different sport. It's like he's playing rounders at the moment. He's all over the place. Go on. Go on. Go score, Luckman. Go score. There's seconds to go. How are you being caught up there? You're fresh legs, and yet the centre-back's just caught up to you. We've got to pick out Janssen here, surely. Somebody. Go on. Pick him out. Pick him out. Overhead kick. Oh, not quite. Lost the game 3-0. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe how things have gone so far. Uh, not very good at all. We're out of the FA Cup, obviously. Like I say, it's not the biggest deal being out of the FA Cup. It's, it's more the performance that I'm bothered about. Of course, we made loads of changes as well. Uh, that's not really the point. The point is we should have scored once or twice. We didn't. And again, you know, got completely humiliated by Aston Villa this time round. Uh, not good enough. I'm trying our best. And uh, it's just not working. This week, Brown goes up to 74 overall. It's good to see him growing once again. Um, he is obviously a permanent signing for us, so it's important we do try and get him go up and overall. Okay, three players going back from their loans as well. Uh, Wilkes, Coyle and Jabitsky, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so that's interesting. Coyle might be a better option for us as a second choice right back. Jabitsky might be an option as a, just a better player in general. We'll have to wait and see. I'll probably try and give him a try at some point. Wilkes probably needs a bit of training. 63 overall isn't great. Uh, but maybe some potential there. Okay, transfer frame here for Kevin Phillips, £7.2 million. Pounds. They're testing us here um, because, you know, he's a great player, 75 overall, but he's not played how I want him to play in game. It's very frustrating with him. I think we've got to keep him, um, but it is a tempting amount of money when you don't have that much. We're going to reject it, though. Uh, a loan offer for Edmondson once again. A lot of loan offers coming in for him. Don't really know if we should loan him out. I might just get rid of him, to be honest. Let's load him out, and we'll accept the other offer as well from Hibernian. Okay, so I'm making a bit of a strange move here for a guy uh, called Cissé. He plays for MK Dons. I've got MK Dons career mode, so I know a little bit about him already. A 6 or 5 holding midfielder, left-footed, and good at shooting. I uh, really like him, actually, in-game a lot. So it's a strange signing. He's only maybe 65 overall, if that. 
Um, but I bring him in because he's somebody I think is really good in midfield and an option for us potentially. And like I say, it's a very strange option possibly, but as a holder midfielder, as a centre mid, he's really, really good. I rate him and I want to try and bring him in to maybe play the odd couple of games. Who, who knows? I think we've got to try just to get a, a functioning uh, starting eleven. I think he could be part of that top possibly as well. And I've got to go a little bit left field with some of these signings. We're going to bring in a new striker, I think, soon as well. Uh, it's got to change something. Clearly, we're not functioning properly. Uh, strikes maybe a little bit of a problem for us. Roof's done really well, but Bamford's just useless. Okay, so we move on to the wage here. He wants 9,400 and a signing on fee. We're just going to be a little bit cheap on him here. We're going to say you can have 9,000 and the exact same signing on fee. See what he says to that. He will accept it. There we go. And Cissé joins. I should make it clear though, he joins us next season. Why can't I sign him straight away? That's annoying. Okay, so we're going to make a move for this 22 year old striker. He's Dutch and uh, I've heard of him before. Uh, he's got everything I'm after really. Six foot two and he's fast. He's got good shooting as well. So we're going to make a move for this guy. Uh, not really too sure what his value is. He's got a release cost of 3.9 million, I think. I could have activated it. Uh, I decided not to because I felt like I could probably get it for cheaper. So we're going to go 2.8, see what they say to that initial offer. 2.95, okay, we're not that far away. And a sell-on clause. Don't like the sell-on clause. We'll get rid of that and we'll submit that offer. See what they say, 3.35. Let's go 3.15, see what they say to that. And that's a fair offer, he's accepted it. No idea what overall he is. I'm going to guess like 69, 70 overall possibly, but I've no idea what he is on this FIFA. I'm going to go and pull to first team player again, just making it up here to be totally honest. And we'll have to guess his wage probably as well. Three year deal, let's go ahead with that. Let's have to maybe a little bit longer, but that's fine for now. And no release clause, happy to accept that. Okay, wage wise, I've, I've no idea. Oh no. Okay, we're going to say 15 grand and just give him 100 grand. That should be enough, surely. Come on, accept that. Oh, okay, insulting. That's a no then. Okay, so we'll have to wait on that one. Would have been helpful if I'd known what wage you wanted. Another suggestion from the last episode was to try and bring in, uh, I think Chris Wood, I think was the player uh, they want me to try and bring in. Just realised he's got a 21.7 million pound release clause. So uh, this could be interesting. We'll wait and see what Burnley say, how much they want for him. Hopefully they're going to be willing to let him go. Part of this deal is obviously to get rid of Bamford as part of the deal so that we won't have even more strikers. Uh, let's just wait and see whether they're even interested in Bamford. He's worth 3.7 so that's not a great deal. Not even interested. Okay, so they're interested in Forshaw, um, but they want £14 million pounds, uh, as well as Forshaw. Will you take three, do you think? Go on, here we go. £3 million. Pounds. No? Alright, bye Sean. Okay, so that's everything for this episode. I've tried lots of different players to try and bring in, not showing you some of them on camera because a lot of them have been very unsuccessful. So, yeah, we're going to have to try and reset for next episode. Hopefully come up with something that's going to try and change our season around a little bit. I mean, I say I'm bringing a new striker. I don't really have any problem with Roof. I just think we need another striker to come in and help him. He scored 11 goals for us. He's done very, very well. Fourth in the top goal scorers lists. And he's actually playing quite well uh, in games. So I've not really got any issues with him specifically. We just need someone to come in to challenge him and be as consistent as he is as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to hopefully try to sort that out next episode. Leave your suggestions in the comments section below uh, as to who I should be selling as well as signing as well. That's just as important. Who I should be getting out the door as well as bringing in. That's everything for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I'd appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing if you haven't already as well. As try and push towards 25,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.